Live from New Orleans, Louisiana, it's the Cube covering .next Conference 2018. Brought to you by Nutanix. Welcome back to the Cube. This is Silicon Angle Media's live production of Nutanix .next 2018. If you've eaten a lot of the cuisine here in New Orleans, you might want to do something to help burn those calories. And joining us for this segment, happy to welcome Sarah Rob O'Hagan, who's the CEO of Flywheel Sports and also yeah. the author of Extreme U. Yeah. Uh, Sarah, welcome to our program. Thanks for uh, having tell me. Tell us a little bit about uh, your, your company and, and yeah. what, what brings your group what? to the show. Yeah, we're very excited to be here. This is a whole new experience for us. Um, Flywheel is an indoor cycling business, so we started off um, it's basically bricks and mortar indoor cycling classes, and we were the first company to put technology on the bike. So, have either of you done spinning before ever? I've uh, uh, I've, I've seen them in a gym. Yeah. Seen them in a gym. Yeah, so I, I take my bike on the, yeah. on the trails and get my kids out a bunch, but not so indoors so much. In the old days, if you did a spinning class and the instructor was like, "Turn up your resistance," you'd maybe kind of pretend, but you didn't do right. it. Whereas. We put tech on the bike, so it's like, oh, you have to hit this number, and you got to get this output, and so it makes it much more athletic and accountable. And then we uh, just recently launched a streaming platform, so now you can stream the classes into one of our bikes in your home. It's called Fly Anywhere. So we ended up coming here because I was um, speaking at the conference with regards to my book, and we were like, these these are fun people. They're going to want to check out our bikes and our tech, so let's do it. Wait, wait, so the, the tech people, are they getting engaged? Are they, are oh, they trying it out? amazing, yeah. We've seen people like riding to win the leaderboard wearing jeans. It's fantastic. <laughs> that is, I'm, I'm a runner, so. Yeah, me you too. But you know, there's certain runners and there's certain cyclists that you know that there's this built-in competition. Like, ah, uh, you know, cycling is for the hardcore yeah. folks that you know really like to work out. And then you have uh, guys like me. I can't stream an <laughs> app to say, hey, you know what? You need to pick up your pace and keep it moving. That is an amazing kind of innovation, especially yeah. for for that market, there's an awful lot of competition. Mm -hmm. How are you differentiating yourself yeah. between the competition? That's a great question. So it starts with who we're serving, who we're doing it for, right? So if you, there's about 100 million people in America that work out maybe between zero and six times a week. Our consumers are the ones that are like five to six times a week. They mm. are hardcore, they're intense, they like competition, they are like, I can't let the kids win a Monopoly kind of people, you know. And so how we differentiate is everything in the product is, has been designed with them in mind. So allowing them to really push their own performance in a big way. And the metrics, like every time you do a ride, particularly on the streaming platform, like you can pace against yourself last time you rode, so you can see, am I keeping up, am I doing better? So it's basically about really focusing on one kind of athlete, as we call them, and meeting their needs the best that we can. Yeah. The digital transformation is hitting your industry hard. Totally. You're streaming now. You, yeah. You've been through some big brands big in, in the past. Yeah. Uh, how's this impacting? How, how does your company, you know, yeah. deal with the pace of change? Well, you know, it's funny. Like I um, have been lucky in that my career, I've journeyed through some very big, iconic brands. So I was at Virgin Mega Stores when we used to buy music. Do you remember on things that went round and round from a retail store, right? <laughs> And then along came Napster and totally disrupted that industry. I was at Gatorade when we had to transform that. And what I've learned along the way is that you just have to like commit yourself to constantly innovating and disrupting yourself. Because if you let the environment do it to you, it's too late. And so I think that's how we think about it. Like we saw it not so much from the market, because certainly streaming is taking off. Like health and fitness apps in the app store are always the top category, both Android and um, iPhone. Also boutique fitness was exploding, so that's where you do you know, one kind of modality as opposed to going to a full service gym. And so we saw these trends happening, but then you speak to the consumer, it's like, what are you looking for? And what we kept hearing was, I love being at Flywheel, but I wish I could get it when I was on the road, when I'm in the hotel, when I'm, you know, and so we're like, how do we bring our content to you wherever you need it at any time? So that was really what led to it. So I'd like to talk to you about discoverability. Like, mm -hmm. like as you said, go to the app store, you know what, you Google fitness app, yeah. you're going to get 10,000 results. Yeah. How do you guys rise to the top? How do you yeah. find new customers? 
So interestingly enough, we, I think, are lucky because of our existing business. So we have a footprint of 42 studios. We have 600,000 people that have ridden with Flywheel over the years. And what's neat about having that in-person experience is you really build brand evangelists. So a lot of our um, early sales of the streaming platform have come from those people who are telling their friends about it who are not in communities where our studios exist. And then from obviously a paid digital ad standpoint, we can get very, very specific into lookalike types to the kinds of consumer we have because they have pretty standard typical behaviors in terms of they happen to do a lot of marathons, they happen to do Tough Mudders and stuff like that, they're runners, they're doing strength workouts. So we can see what these kinds of people are online to like really be focused on how we target them. Yeah, Sarah, what about the monetization? You yeah. know, there's the, the freemium models, there, there's all different things. How, how, how yeah. has this, this move impacted that? It's a great question. So we're doing our streaming as a subscription model and actually we look for a one year commitment because we really believe that, particularly because we're going after someone who's very engaged in the category, we want them to sign up and be with the program and basically get that loyalty to not only the programming, the instructors they love, but the data. Like, once they've got data in the system, it becomes, that's a, a method of loyalty because I want to, you know. <laughs> it is sticky. <laughs> it keeps them, keeps them um, wanting to know what their previous results were. So that's a lot of, for us, we're not really doing free leading in. I mean, certainly we do trial classes in our studios, but we know that people basically, if they make a commitment, that's how they become really loyal to our brand and our category. So talk to us as a leader and mm -hmm. someone who's you know what, there's probably nothing more personal, more critical to me than my running data. Like, I, I completely trust it to my cloud provider, and if it was yeah. to ever go away, I'd, I'd be devastated. Yeah. Like, you know, totally. if, I, if I have a big running goal, as you pick technology partners, mm -hmm. and you, 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 you have that weight, like, someone may look at it from the outside, oh, what's the big deal if your cycling data is gone? Yeah. Oh. That's very serious. Absolutely. How do you How do you pick technology partners that help you to extend the trust that your users put into you yeah. to your technology partner. We're just so like it, it's it's so profoundly important to the relationship with our consumer that when we're picking technology partners, we're always going to go for best in class, and we're always going to make sure those are the people that we know are treating the data with the same kind of um, importance, I guess, that we are. So. For example, we're actually doing a lot with Apple right now, not surprisingly, with the Apple Watch because they it, that's the kind of partner we see so many of our riders are using Apple Watches in the experience anyway, and we want to be able to um, take the data that's coming through that device, add it to what we're getting off the bike, and make it more meaningful for that particular um, consumer. So it's it's very important to us. Like we would not ever go with some fly-by-night you know, tech partner if they didn't have the kind of credentials that we were looking for. All right, so Sarah, tell us about the book. Step yes. up, stand out, kick ass, repeat. Kick ass, people. That's what it's about. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so I wrote the book um, about a couple years ago. Uh, it's interesting how it came about. You're a runner, so I think you'll appreciate this. Um, I have three kids and my kids were going and playing youth sports and coming home with participation trophies. I'm like, what the hell is that? Like, why did you get a trophy for just showing up, you know? And then at the same time, I noticed in the workforce, like, younger um, employees that were coming in who were like, where's my promotion? I'm here. And it, it's connected, right? And so I started to do a lot of research and I realized that for 20, 30 years, we had been raising kids from a self-empowerment standpoint to not expose them to risk and failing and all these, these things, yet the most successful people in the world have gone through really tough times to get there. And so I went down this journey of interviewing some really incredible people, like from Condoleezza Rice through to Bodie Miller, the skier, through to Mr. Ta uh, Mr. Cartoon, who's a tattoo artist, like all people who are top of their game and what they do and to basically weave together what were the commonalities that got them there to help educate um, another generation of how to do the same for themselves. And then also applied it to business. So take those themes and then how do you bring that to life as a leader within your team to get the most results out of your organization? Well, it's surprising. Well, I guess it's not surprising. How many people in our industry that are 
high performers, executives that are also extreme act athletes, whether they're uh, go they're extreme cyclists, ran into a, a, a ran with a group of people the other day, one of the cyclists says, you know what, the, my biggest complaint about the iPhone is only lasts three hours. No, oh, yeah. I, yeah, yeah. Uh, which so is a I huge complaint. That. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, sure. and that same attitude extends out. Yeah. One question about innovation. Yeah. The, as, what, how do you guys consider or approach innovation yep. in a market that actually, you know, like cycling, pretty straightforward. Yep. You know, you get on a bike and you run, yep. or if you're not, you know, directly creating equipment, how do you guys consider innovation? Yeah. Is it just physical? Is it data? Is it services? Yeah. It's What's all of the above, right? And what I love about being in this category, I've been in sports and fitness for 20 years. I was at Nike, I was at Gatorade, now I'm at Flywheel. And what I love is innovation is all about are we making the athlete better, period. And so it's such a clear filter. And that may be through data that gives you insights of how you rode today versus yesterday. What did you eat? Did that make the ride better or worse? Or it may be the in the case of you know, Nike and Gatorade, the products you put on your body, in your body, like they're all in service of helping you be better. And I think it enables us to sort of like not get distracted by the sort of, oh, this is the cool hip thing right now that everyone's doing in every category and instead go, well, is that helping to make an athlete better? Is it motivating them? Is it helping them physically? Is it essentially getting them better results? All right. Sarah Rob O'Hagan, thank you so much for joining us. It's been fun. We definitely have to check out uh, your, your set, your, your area before yeah. we wrap up. Awesome. We'll be back with lots more coverage here from Nutanix.next 2018 in New Orleans. For Keith Townsend, I'm Stu Miniman. Thanks for watching theCUBE.